Hey guys, so good evening everybody. How you doing? How's everybody? I just lost my train of thought. Does that ever happen to you? <laughs> Let's start this again. Guys, good evening. Welcome to another edition of FaceTime with Todd Warden. And of course, I'm your man, Steve Harvey. No, I'm just playing. I'm your man, Todd Warden, here on a beautiful Wednesday night, right here in Lounge Studios, New York City, the home of FaceTime with Todd Warden. Glad to see everybody's doing well, being happy, being safe, the whole nine. So let's get some of the uh, news out of the way. Uh, so great news for a lot of the unemployed, restaurant employees, families, the whole nine. Happy to announce that the $1.9 trillion COVID-19 bill, relief bill, was just passed. It's going to the White House for Biden to sign it. And then unemployment will be extended, I believe, all the way to September. It's an extra $300 a week. It's not a lot, but you want to know something? It, it's still great, right? Everybody can get at least $600 a week plus the $1,400 uh, COVID relief bill for anybody making under $75,000, and that's great. And guys, just please, even though you're getting this money, still try to look for a job because we're all in that depressed mode, but we want to keep ourselves uplifted. And if you can't find a job, do it. Do what other people do. Find something to do. Fulfill your passion. Have fun. Keep doing it. And uh, you got to find a way because we're all in this together. Always remember that. Okay? Now, let's talk about Meghan and Harry. Um, I don't know about you guys, but, I, I, you know, they're a really cool couple, but I'm kind of getting sick of the story because my attitude is, guys, just let it go. They decided to live their own life. They move to the U.S., they want to live, you know, more freely, they want to have a family, and they don't want to be stuck with the rules that obviously the king and queen and being a royal is going to give, and they don't want to deal with that. So my attitude is, guys, love them, they're your family, let it go, they made a choice, this is not 1912, it's 2021, okay? Let them live, let them make a family, let them be happy, and you want to know something? They may prove to be a perfect example of what maybe your family should aspire to be as well. You know, freedom. And uh, I think that's what they wanted. And we saw everything else, what's going on. My attitude is just let it go. The last thing we need is another reality show out from England. You know what I'm saying? We don't need it anymore. Um, the other thing is, I'm a little bothered by this. What is up with Texas? Like, hey, let's just lift the mandate that you have to wear a mask. And then the guy goes on and say, well, you know, we lifted it. But, you know, Texans are smart. You know, they'll probably still wear it. It's like, idiot. It doesn't matter if they're smart or not. You don't uplift them. You, you don't take out the mask mandate, right? And there's only been like 10% of the country vaccine. So what? You're going to give 90% of the country at risk? Because you're going to be the example to the other states, and other states may fall in line. So, guys, I'm not a politician. I'm a human. So, check it. Wear your mask. Practice social distancing. And let's all get through this together so we can live another 80 years. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's really not that complicated. And then, last but not least, I just got off the phone with a great guy, Casey Amos. And he's the son of John Amos. We just had John and Casey on Friday. And they love the interview so much. They have some big things coming up in three weeks. And they want to come back on FaceTime with Todd Warden. So in April, Coming to America is coming to FaceTime with Todd Warden. Round two, John Amos and Casey back here in April. So I'm excited about that. But I'm even more excited because I got my dog in the house tonight. My man, Keith Shockley. DJ, music producer, businessman, party animal, and all around good guy. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm psyched to chop it up with him tonight on FaceTime with Todd Warden. So we are about to bring this guy in, and we're going to uh, do right. And uh, let me just type him in here, and we're going to get this thing going. Keith, where you at? All right, here we go. FaceTime with Todd Warden, and we're going to chop it up today. Bro, how you doing, man? Yo. I see you. You see me? Yeah, I got you. I got you. Your volume's off, bro. My, can you hear my volume, man? Is that all right? Your volume's off. My volume's off? Yeah, your volume's off. Oh. Yeah, your volume's off. Oh. My volume's off. You don't hear me? Oh, 
Oh, how about, how about you, you, you don't hear me? I mean, you don't sound right either. Uh, let me let me log back in. That's crazy. I can't hear him at all. Okay, we got to try again. Can you just request? We're going to bring you back in. We're going to start this all over again. Live by the tech, die by the tech. So while we're waiting for Keith Shockley, tonight's show is brought to you by Haynes. It fits me snugly. They fit good. They got it on the side. It's not just for Michael Jordan, son. It's for my, myself as well. Hanes, the underwear that fits you like a glove. Let's bring him back. Let's try that now. Now my Hanes just popped up. How about now? Can you hear me? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why. Because you sound, you sound kind of weird. Sometimes. You sound, you sound weird to me. I'm a tough guy, so let me see if I can see this out for you, bro. Many Beach. I don't know if y'all can hear me. My people at Connected Music Group. Sarita, smile. Oh, yeah. I, I, you, you sound like there's a ring in you. I don't know. No, it's not working. You don't hear nothing? I, I use my iPad all the time. It's, it's iPad. It's Apple and iPad. No, I can't hear you, dude. I mean, I, I hear you, but you're... you're... Oh, Rick Korn started my video. I'm going to do one thing. Let me log in one more time. Let me, let me try log in one more time. I'm going to log out. Yeah. And then we're going to come right back. We're going to start this again. So, guys, I'm hang tight. I'm going to try to fix this for this guy, right? Give me one sec, guys. Be right back. Bring Keith back in. See if I fix that form. Get this thing going again. Yeah, no, I hear that, man. Thank you, Connect the Music Group. Yeah, I know. I think it was on his side. So we're trying to figure out what's going on with his side of the phone. You guys can hear me fine, correct? Let me see if I can... Uh, Get him again, hold on. See if that works. How about that? That's perfect. All right. I have, I got to assume you had your, your Bluetooth on. No, I don't use Bluetooth. Oh, that's weird. I don't use Bluetooth. I, uh, All right. Well, well, what I did was it's worked. I shut it down and, and turned it back on. I don't know. Yeah, no worries. It happens. So, guys, let's start this over. I got my man, my dog, DJ, music producer, great guy, businessman. He's been rocking out for God knows how long, Mr. Keith Shockley Keith. And by the way, brother, I know you. it was a last-minute thing. You couldn't find what we were looking for. But don't worry, dog. I'm all about it. Ah. I'm all about it. Come on, now. There you go. Come on now. There you go. You know I'm a I'm, you know I'm a techie man. I'm gonna hook you up. <laughs> Come on now. Oh my god. I'm, you know I'm, I'm gonna I represent. I forget. I, I forget. <laughs> <laughs> so bro, how you doing, man? How is everything with you? It's all right, man. I'm good. I'm hanging in there. Yeah. You're, Maintaining. You're in the studio right now. Yeah. I, I I try to conduct a lot of stuff here. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, see, so, I'm eating red vines, Sarah. Red vines. 
Red vines. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I little twi- I call them Twizzlers. Huh? Little Twizzlers. They're, they're, they're a different version of Twizzlers. <laughs> yeah, they're the ones that are straight. They're the smooth yeah, boys. They they have a different flavor than the Twizzlers. So I, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. So you know what? I didn't realize, bro. I honestly didn't know, and I should have known this, and it's my fault. I didn't know you were from Roosevelt. Yeah. And of course, I should know that. <laughs> Hey, how you not because, that? <laughs> because I'm an idiot. Because I'm an idiot. Like, hello. I post it's that, like, of course. I post that. I post that all the time. I'm from the belt. We call yeah, it, we but call it's it the funny belt. because yeah, yeah, because I uh, I went to East Meadow High School. We all work. My studio's right. Yeah, my studio's right down the it's block like, from there. Exactly. It's like a small world. Like you're in Roosevelt, T Money from your own TV Raps, and uh, Dre are from Westbury, you know. And then you also got your dogs, um, uh, Chuck D and Flavor yep. Flav, who you childhood friend. And, um, I, I, um, I went to school with Eddie Murphy. Mm. Um, you know, mm-hmm. it's how Stern always talks about Roosevelt because he's from Roosevelt. Yeah. Yeah, and Eddie was just on all the talk shows, and I just had the pleasure, like I was telling you, speaking with John Amos on Friday, and uh, I got him back coming soon, so I'm pumped about that, man. We have a lot going on with him, so it's going to be good. But we're going to talk about you today, man, because there is a lot, a lot of stuff. First of all, I know you go by, you know, Wizard K- KG, right? Yep. So where did that name come from? <laughs> Cause that's not one of your ordinary names. There's got to be a story with that. This damn near story with with everything I do. <laughs> so <laughs> back in the DJ days, um, you know, we was young when I was really young. Um, me and uh, and uh, my brother is DJ, and my youth center and my mom's basement, and then me and Professor Griff DJ together. Like we're like a team. But we had crews, right? You know? Yeah, this is the 70s. Yeah. This is the 70s, man. Late 70s, everybody was a stick up kid. <laughs> I was a baby everybody, stick up kid. I was robbed. sticking up my you crib, like, give me my Gerber. I know. You just got robbed just, <laughs> just because. But because I flew, flew, you know, we flew in the streets a lot, you know, never, that didn't happen to us. But Griff was my partner, and we was called mm-hmm. the KGs. Actually, Keith and Griff. Kind of right. kind of a playoff of cooling and gangs. Uh, Younger, younger brother, um, yeah, the KGs. Um, there was there was actually a group, you know, um, signed to uh, what was they signed to? I just played them the other night. I think Bang Records or something like that. Um, mm-hmm. So it was keeping Griff, you know, in the hood, you know, in our, our little neighborhood. We was the KGs, and all of a sudden, when Griff left and Chuck came along, Chuck yeah. was king, king namer of everybody. He gave everybody right. a name because this is DJ. Because I used to just, what's your name, Keith? That's just DJ. I'm just rocking the parties. I ain't, I ain't had no DJ in front of it, none of that. Just Keith. So he said, yo, Keith, we got to give you a, I got to give you a name. So right. we're going to, I'm going to, you know, you're you're the wizard because you're the wizard of the, on the wheels. So, and he said, well, we're going to just use KG. Like, you know, it's still because you were still keeping grip. So. I right. said, I, 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 whatever, Chuck. You, you, the, you, the rapper. You know, you do, you do what you do. You, the, you, the right, 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 you, the MC. So, but how he did it was, and the spelling was K dash J double E. So everybody right. like, you know, K J, K G, it's K G. So if, all the ebonics oh, people all like what? Are people don't understand <laughs> it. So this was like just a seventy. About, about 70, 77, about 78. 77 is going into 78. So, and he always had a reason behind everything. So it was based upon taking it from this group called the Night Lighters. And the spelling right. came from there. And they had a song that was kind of hot in the disco club, you know, the disco text, called KG. And they spelt it K-J-E-E. So it just became, and when Chuck put it together, Wizzy KG, and you write it out, it just looks slick on a flyer. So it was yeah, like, it does. we just rocked it, and then everybody, everybody from the hood, because we was doing so many parties in the parks, 
throwing parties at the at the halls of either the VFW, um, DJing the colleges. You know, everybody's yep. doing this KG. So when you come to my hood, everybody be like, yo, KG, what's up? And, and, uh, and the, nah, the, man, the I'm going to walk in and be like, like yeah. <laughs> so, I'm going to be like, they're going to be like, KG, I'm like, KG, I'm like, well, his name's Malcolm. Yeah, that's, <laughs> Wait, that's, what are you talking that's, about? <laughs> that's kind of like, that's kind of like when you really know me, like, like Mesa, when I hang out with Mesa from daylight, he'd be like, yo, KG, man, they really know because that's how I was on Long Island. Everybody knew it was SKG on Long Island. Well, I'm going to keep that in mind. I'm going to keep that in mind because when I'm in Roosevelt or if I ever go back to Roosevelt, everybody knows I don't live there. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> you ain't from here, man, wearing your pink Calvin Klein hoodie. <laughs> you ain't from here. Yep. So. <laughs> Not at all, man. Now, but Roosevelt has some memories for me because we didn't play them a lot, but when we did play, like, exhibition games, mm -hmm. Man, you guys whoop our butt Man. like crazy football, basketball. So, <laughs> see, here's the I thing. I to walk in and be like, do you guys have a chess tournament or something? Yo, it, that we, we can win? no, we didn't have a chess tournament. But, we, I mean, sports was our thing. Everybody was a ball player. So, mm -hmm. here's the crazy part about growing up in where we had Rose, in Roosevelt. It kind of was the center point for, like, you want to call them boroughs, but, but the town. We was like, right. there was Hempstead, there was Uniondale, Freeport. Right. Behind That's us around. was Merrick. And right. everybody always wanted to hang out in Roosevelt because we had, during the 70s, there was Rucker Park, and everybody would tell you. Yep. And then right. everybody came to Centennial Park, where I lived at, right. down the street from me, to play ball. Yeah. So that was, yeah. if you wasn't in the Rutgers, the Rutgers was another level. But if you coming into college or you knew in college, like a cast from Georgetown, St. John's, and it would come through. Everybody would come through. Everybody during the 70s and, and up to the early 80s played at Centennial Park. So that was, right. that was the spot. You, ball was, the, was it. Yo. Want to know something funny? <laughs> Yo, you'll like this. You know how Centennial Park had, um, they had a summer league every year? Yep. And I think there was a guy, I think his name was Smooth or something yeah, like that, smooth. who was one of the ballers. Yep. Well, the referee yep. that did all those games yep. was my father. Oh. Yeah, so if you ever heard the guy, Alan Warden, oh, that was yeah. my dad. Yeah. He ran the PSAL. That's my yep. pop. Yep. Oh, yeah, wow. so that, I used to love I, going to Centennial Park. Know. Now I know. <laughs> that's my pops. Yeah. I used to love going to Centennial Park because – Playing in East Meadow, I mean, you're playing Hicksville and all these other teams. But when you go to Centennial, you actually see what street ball is all about. And you see how high these guys jump. And I was a fat kid. I wish I could jump that high because I would have been able to reach the Oreos without my mom seeing it. <laughs> <laughs> so I got it. So, you know, Wait. having that in our town was just just the thing, you know. I mean, you still had the city, the West Forfee, but when you actually came to Long Island, Centennial mm -hmm. Park, man. A lot of cats would tell you they were just yeah. everybody was were, were there. I remember um um Billy Donovan, the the NBA yeah. coach. He came to the park one day and just lit the park up. <laughs> he was like, "This little white boy coming in here, busting it, yo!" He lit the park up. That like, it was crazy. So you know, I ain't I ain't much of a ball player, but I I'm a little no, bit, I, but not much. I'm a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, when it comes to ball, you know, you brothers, yeah. I wish I had your jumping style. I do, but I always tell people, if you ever see a white guy at a Centennial Park on one of the deep parks that they ball, yep. this is not white man can't jump. You can't. They're not going to be like, oh, he can't play. Yep. He's there for a reason. There was, I'm just saying. When 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 the white when the white brothers come through the park and they can ball, they actually most of them went to the pros, and it was crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah, and they all like, went there. Yeah. It, was, it was crazy. Like, yeah. Wally Sterbiak, I believe, played down there a couple of times. Yeah, we used to have because they, call, they go to Centennial mm -hmm. because they want to up their game. Yeah. Because whether you're going to make the NBA or not, if you really want to get tough, mm -hmm. you want to play quicker, you want to play better, mm -hmm. you have to go to these parks because you guys play much quicker a game than mm -hmm. we do. It, it's, you it's just do. 
It's street ball. Right. So we need to learn how to play that sort of ball because when you go to the NBA, NBA is no joke. College is no joke. But the NBA, you're now playing with the top of the top. Mm. And half those dogs play with the people in Centennial Park who showed them how to do so many street yep. moves. You know what I'm saying? So I had a lot of respect. Yeah. And then you lot, yeah. come to East it was, Meadow. It was big. Yeah. It was big. You come to East Meadow, though, and play at Prospect Park. Yep. That's another park yep. that people played at. Prospect was one, you know, was, so, one, was one of the big, but everybody was, you know, most of the people would come to Centennial. I don't know why. Yep. Oh, well, one of the reasons why Dr. J, which lived around the corner from Centennial growing up, so, and I lived down the street from him. So, that was one of the biggest reasons why people would come to Roosevelt, you know, because of Judas Irving. Yeah. So, um, right. I mean, when he went, when he when he went, we, we the park wasn't built. It was built after he got out of college, you know. Mm -hmm. He was every at that time. Everybody had to go to the ruckus and tear it up, and you know, Julius would, would kill it. So, well, other than that, man, the summer league, summer league was crazy. It was, it was ball summer league, and then every now and then we would set up in the park. And DJ, and then then you had other DJs like DJs from Queens and Brooklyn would come in, and main most of them would come from Queens. Everybody wanted to set up a set up at uh, Centennial Park. Centennial Park was a lot of shit. It was a there. party. A lot it of was shit. a party. Like it was literally like going to an NBA game without paying for tickets. Yeah, yeah. And it was great. And, and a, the ball and a lot was of crazy. Other, and a lot of other shit going on in there. <laughs> There's a lot of other yeah. Shit I mean in Centennial Park. <laughs> Yeah, I was a kid, so sometimes I would go home. My father would be like, are you okay? I'd be like, yo, dad, I'm fine. I'm good. I don't know what was in those brownies. Somebody gave me a brownie, dad. It was so good, but I feel good. <laughs> but, yeah, Centennial Park was was the shit. So getting back to Roosevelt, you mentioned Chuck D. You were changing things. Mm -hmm. When did you guys decide that you really had something here? You're like, yo, we need to, we need to capitalize on this because we have something here. We got music producers, we got a dope ass rapper. We need to, we need to calculate. We need to grow on it. Well, you gotta you stand. We know what the fuck we had. This is, let, me, let me let me be straight. It wasn't like yeah. we sat around. We are gonna be rappers. But you got you gotta understand. There was only like four rap records out, basically. <laughs> you know, <laughs> running them that just dropped their stuff. So at that time, Chuck just graduated from college, man. I kind of like had a daughter in, in the 80s and, and trying to figure out life. I had a job. We are just working. And then all of a sudden, I kind of had to take care of my daughter and, and Chuck. And, and from the radio station that we had, which kind of, you know, blew, blew us up a lot, got us noticed, WBAU. Um, Right. Chuck did this one song, did this one, it was not even a song, it was a promo tape, because, you know, back then, everybody was like, Chuck ain't all of that, Chuck ain't this, right. he ain't fly, so Chuck did our first single, but it which turned out to be our first single, but it was a promo tape mm -hmm. for the radio station, um, wow. and um, now there's, there's like three stories how it got to Def Jam. But Def Jam used to always send their artists to, to BAU, where we used to do our shows. So either, right. it was either between Dre, Dr. Dre from Your MTV Raps, which he was in the group, which he was the uh, second Beastie Boy DJ. And then he, yeah, he got his deal. Yeah, he got, you know, T-Money until you got his deal, original concept. That's right. Jam Master J, who always hung out with us, like Hard Body. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, between... Ed Rock or Mike D of the Beasties. But it was just, it all happened at the same time. So, you know, a lot of people take credit. I don't know how he got it, but I know before anything happened, Russell, not Russell, Russell's out the pitch. Um, Leo Cohen, right? No, Leo, Leo, Leo was the bus driver. Mm -hmm. Leo was road managing, bus driver for running. <laughs> The same bus driver. <laughs> I Leo will kill me. Peep, that was not the bus driver. Leo, no, he Yo, when I see Leo, I'm going to be like, Yo, I didn't hear nothing, Leo man. Cohen, I was just doing the interview. Cohen, the ropes at Dev Jam doing all kinds of stuff. But no, yeah. Leo wasn't in the picture then. Right. Um, 
Rick Rubin was in the picture, was the main dude. Rick Rubin. Rick, yeah, Rick Rubin. Rick, God Rick, bless him, man. See, we didn't get our stuff like everybody else did. They heard a tape, and everybody at Def Jam from DMC on I'm All Down flipped out. They loved that tape that Chuck made as a promo for our radio station, WBAU. Right. So Rick heard that. Rick chased Chuck down for a whole year. Now, what I mean by chase, chased him down, it was like Rick was from Long Island. So it's not like you chasing us, you got to get us. Rick was begging Chuck to do, to sign. And all he wanted right. was Chuck. Right. Nobody else, just <laughs> Chuck. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Chased him down, chased him down, chased him down, and then Chuck is getting his degree from college. I'm doing my thing. Hank and Chuck and Terminator, they still hanging around. I'm like, I got other responsibilities. So between that and then the biggest thing that we was, the biggest thing that that time was going on was you throw parties, people come in, and we make money. We was throwing parties right. hard. Like, we wanted to be like Russell on the party promoting tip, not the not the group shit. We really look. Mm -hmm. We did some things back in the days, trying to get a deal with some demo tapes. Like we used to, we went down to Bobby Robinson at Enjoy Records. Yo, I, if y'all listen to this, this is like New York City history, like late seventies, early eighties, before hip hop pop. So, right. um, and we coming from Long Island because the Bronx had it on lock from the rappers in Harlem. You know, right. Brooklyn's coming in a little bit, but Brooklyn had most of the bands and the sound system. So um, so we trying to get a little deal, a little demo deal and all that. None of that shit went on. None of that shit happened. And then as we got into BAU, we had a voice of doing um, our own deep, our own mixtapes and DJ sets and what you call them, DJ sets now. And then when Chuck did that little demo, Rick wanted to sign Chuck for a whole year. Now, Chuck, at the time, we're still in college. He hasn't graduated. Right. He, he, um, the, that first year, he didn't gra no, he didn't graduate from college, and Rick is still asking him and asking him. And then Chuck graduates from college, gets his gets his d degree, and then the music scene is kind of like in a, you know, the whole hip hop game is not even fully developed in the game in the music, and we're trying to figure it out, and then. Chuck, after Rick slowed everybody down um, and said, yo, man, I really need to sign y'all. And then when, yeah. when Chuck would break it down, we, we call that the great surrender because he didn't want to, he never wanted to be an artist. We wasn't even looking right. at producing and none of that shit. So when he decided to sign, he had a long talk with his pops. Yo, so dad, I'm going to, you know, do this rap thing. Now you got to understand, we came out in 86, so yeah. um, this is 85. Parents was like, Chuck dad was like, yo, we, you just graduated from college with your, with your um, graphics art degree and all of that because Chuck is a great artist. And th that, yeah. what do you mean? What do you mean? And so, <laughs> yeah, we're going, you know, they was, his dad was gracious enough to say, okay, we'll see how that works. At that time, uh -huh. when you're coming out of college or coming from where we are, you always had something. To, you, you, well, what you going to fall back on if that don't work? Yeah. Well, I don't know. <laughs> something. <laughs> so when we did that, Chuck signed. It wasn't even Chuck signed. It was Chuck, Chucky e. D. At the time, there was rappers, Heavy D's coming out, and the Schoolie D did his thing on that. And, you know, yeah. there was a lot of, everybody had a D. We had Spider D. We had, um, 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 uh, 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 everybody had a D on their name. So Hank said, Yeah, like, you know what's great? Huh? But everybody had their own sound. Yeah, because that was the best it, part it was new. about hip hop back then. Everybody that came out, had their own style, their own sound. Yeah, because because if you bought if you bit somebody's style, you get your ass beat. You bit my style. You bit yo. We was into competition, not like now. Yeah, everything's the yeah. Same. Battling because, was crazy back then. Yeah, because cop, because corporations got into the game now. They want everything certain certain way. But you gotta understand, right. they didn't want none of this. 
so when Chuck decided to do the to sign the deal, Hank hold up on Russell, and I'm like, nah, we need we need to do this because mm -hmm. we need a group because we was into groups, you know, the the you know, the BCs was out, you know, everybody had groups going back to the um Furious Five, you know, Cold Crush Brothers, you know, um Crash Crew. That was all groups, and that was the hot shit coming up from the some from the Sylvia Robinson era out of Sugar Hill yeah. Records. So now it's moving in from Sugar Hill Records era, which is independent, coming into production deals with them, which what Def Jam was not a label, it was a production deal that just had a label right. name. So we're coming into that era, stakes are different now. You know, stakes are different. So Hank decided to put a group together. So and at that time, our knowledge of of what's going on around us in the world, uh, because we're Long Island cats, we got the best of best of both worlds. We got the yeah. the private school knowledge and we got the street knowledge. So we're getting birth yeah, to both worlds and we're living in the suburbs and our families from either the Bronx or Harlem, you know, or Brooklyn. So we got all of that going on. So what's happening yeah. is we we our knowledge of everything and um black life, the um Back in the '70s, the, the 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 Nation of Islam movement. Hank was in the Nation. Griff comes from the Nation. All of that. So we understood what was happening, what was going on. So yeah. we wanted to at least. Well, we ain't the bragging, the boast, boasting kind of cats like LL was doing. We you know we ain't trying to like I'll bust you down and beat you up. We just like yo, let's inject knowledge into people, in a different right. way. So Hank decided to put a group. Hank said, "No, it's got to be a group." can't just get Chuck, you know, it's, it's a group. So mm -hmm. with the lyrics and everything that we want that wanted to speak, that's where Flavor's part come in, to, yeah. to tone down the, as they would call us, rebel rousers, or we're just starting trouble, we're anti-government, whatever, whatever the case there was be, that was there to interject the breakdown. So like I said, we never thought about like, yo, we're going to make a record. Nah, it wasn't even... She wasn't even in our game. The game was we come in there, and shock the world for, for two years and get out of it and do something else. Problem was yeah. we did it so good, it stuck. And then it took a whole right. nother life. So that's why it became that, you know, we was there. We don't have this. We wasn't sitting home trying to figure out you know, on it on a you know on the couch and we'll just grab a mic and do that. We ain't do none of that shit. We just got down. Yeah. You know, and, and my man Break Me Lou's in the house. I love my that's my man. Yeah. Um and it wasn't for Break Me Lou. We wouldn't have a lot of the breaks that we was doing. But we had an idea of giving the world or just our hood knowledge. You know, Chuck had once said, you know, rap music is the CNN of 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 black life at that time. Yeah, you know, yeah. the privileged. Especially the, the way he time. did it, because especially the way you did it, because public enemy was a very political group. Um, no, and they got, I, I don't, people call it, I don't call it political. That's from my perspective. No, we just got tired of the shit that was going on. And all we did was speak I'm about not, what I'm was not talking on. politics. Yeah. I'm not talking politics the way we see politics now. I'm talking, you took a different side of politics and became a positive political group. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. Where the message that you sent wasn't a selfish message to get votes. The message that you sent in a political statement was to tell the world we've had enough. And like Bob Molly said, we're going to bring people together through music. So we're going to put our words into this song. And we're going to make this thing powerful. And when that song came out, Fight the Power, every community was feeling that. Yeah, White I mean, community, Asian, Latin, every community was like, Fight the power, and the message was crazy. And you guys did that, I believe, in Brooklyn. Well, we and just yeah. everybody came out. Yeah, we did that because you know we became Spike's favorite group. And I mean, I mean, I, I think one of the reasons why that song was was big and powerful was because the movie at the time, yeah. movie reigned supreme, and we put a we put a song in a movie that was. Big coming out. Come on, yeah, Danny Aiello coming out in that movie, man. Like, what? My time, dude. Yo, like, you know, so, you know, it, it was just big for this, for, you know, as you know, movies can sell uh, a song. 
Spike I mean, just like wanted one life. song, and we was looking at him like, this is bananas. Why would you just want one song? This one song is going to plead throughout the whole movie. And it was placed in places where yeah, you can't was, think about that movie without that song. Because that was the only you song can't. in the, that was the only song in the movie. <laughs> it was it was, there was no awesome. And the cast in that there was the cast is crazy. For two hours, there was no other song in that movie. No other song. There was scoring. Wow. That's not song. Yeah. There was scoring, but one song. There that has never been done. Yeah, and you said it because movies definitely make a huge impact. Especially that, at Not that time. So, I don't know if it's about more today because everything's about uh, you know singles. Today. But like when Kid and Play did that movie, all that a lot of their songs. It's like people understand when you break into film from music. There's a whole another world out there that you're tapping into. Yeah. When it comes to your movie, like Will Smith did it. Well, I mean, Every, and they, it's the silver screen. It's it's like yeah. everybody, everybody gravitated to that for the silver screen. Come on, man. You have brothers in the hood going to check out Flashdance just because of the small scene that the Rocksteady crew had. Nobody gave a... Yeah. Can I cuss on here? Nobody gave a fuck about Jennifer Beals in the movie. We just knew Crazy Legs and them had a small-ass part in that movie. Yeah. And the hood went to go yeah. see it. So we it came out because we were starving to see our street life and our, our hip hop with, at the t culture coming to the screen. It's like we did, we, you know, we got tired of seeing all that other shit. Like, like you know, this is real shit. You know? Yeah. And, and I love movies like that know, coming from Crush Guru, Breaking, Beach that, Street. Beach Street. And Beach Street was a Harry Belafonte movie. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of people don't even know that. That was his movie. He produced that. A lot of people well, that's Harry why Belafonte. I'm Yeah. Yeah, and that's why I'm looking forward to uh, Play's documentary movie, which I got had the pleasure. I was talking about in another interview. I went to go see the trailer of it. Uh, he had a little skit. It was in Queens. He's doing a huge documentary on how dance has influenced the culture of hip hop, and it was dope. Well, it, and he's it, it always it now. all of, all. It's like I don't consider one bigger than the other. No. Me, I have my 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 Keith Shockley views on things, and um, this is Keith Shockley views, everybody. So if y'all want to Keith to go, Keith said you Brooklyn guys in and uh, no, um, it all have been influenced. We had we've always had dance styles and dancers back in the days. It's always been part of the culture. It's just that yeah. it got focused because now you can see it in a visual, but dance always mm -hmm. been that from dancers like the, you know, later on the Running Man, but let's go before that, where we had stuff like, um, you know, we, we even made up a dance called The Lowdown off of Bob Scaz's song back in 19, what did the record come out, like 75? Off of that. Yeah. You know, so we had, we had, people had, we always had that, so that's part of the culture. It's just that when it moved into the up rocking and the floor breaking with a, with a, with a, where the Latin kids, the crazy legs, and them made famous that we all lived together, that became yeah. even a whole nother zone. It now it became a particular style. So yep. that, that's why that's part of it. That's how hip hop really became a when people say hip hop's a culture, understand where the culture came from. It was music, it was dance. It was all of it. It was pretty much the expression of everything from the streets. Yeah, I mean put into arts. I and mean it it, awesome. it, it's 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 that. You know, from the streets and and everything from the streets, whether you in the suburbs or you in the urban area or just places where you don't have, you know, uh, it came about because we didn't have, you know, we didn't have right. they, we we didn't have like we had to go rent out ballrooms to throw parties and and you know we, we didn't have a lot and they sometimes they didn't want to when it got too crazy. This was before hip hop and just just the DJ culture. I can talk about the DJ culture from New York. It's crazy. Like, oh, everybody, yeah. Yeah, everybody's DJing now. Everybody's cutting masters. But the before all that. Just because you're DJing doesn't mean you can do that. that. And theater, you know, like, there's a culture before that that got there. Yeah. I still love turntable DJs more than Serratos anyway. So, well, I mean, I'm a, I'm a whatever kid. it is, time changed. But there's a culture. It, it always will. Yeah, it always will. There's a culture that comes, that comes about. 
with this whole thing. And and I, I always try to speak on shit like, you know, what people did and, you know, how it was and how it affected the suburbs. You know, it was a yeah. big war with the Bronx and and parts of, you know, the Brooklyn part of the music side, not the not the not the gangster side, <laughs> you know, and Queens right. that the Long Island cats, you know, didn't know, but we all we hung out everywhere. We hung out everywhere. I fever, all of that. You know, so you know, we just didn't dress like we was from Long Island. <laughs> that was how <laughs> I was like, mm, he smells like he grew up around a lot of trees. <laughs> and I don't know all the trees. <laughs> So, hey, if you guys don't know, right now I'm talking with the man, Keith Shockley. You can definitely find him on Instagram, Keith Shockley. Uh, you can find me, Todd Warden Official. Right now we're chopping it up on FaceTime with Todd Warden. We do this five nights a week, interview celebrities five nights a week, every night. So we're killing it right now with the man right now. So you're talking about Mr. Chuck D and you and Public Enemy, which I found you guys online, a little dope picture behind me. Yeah. Uh, um, See you on the red carpet. I told him, man, I do my work when I do this show. So um, you guys developed an amazing relationship, Flavor Flav. Fear of a Black Planet was definitely a amazing. You know what I loved about when, how you guys marketed uh, one of your um, albums? I think you did it for like six months. All you did was pull up, put up the bullet, uh, the shooting range. The target? Sign. The target. The target, right? All over the city, everywhere. Yeah, that's, that's all it was. That was that's that's Def Jam and Chuck. <laughs> it's like, I, so I smart it because everybody was trying to figure it out. Like, what what is this? Yeah. And then when the album came out, Def Jam, Chuck, and my, and my my brother, my brother is most of it. You know, yeah. Him and him and Chuck are like when they're together, man. They're just at that time. It was, it was just under we understood where things needed to look like, where it needed to be at. You know, we, we, we just knew, man. I mean, we had jobs in record stores, and my brother worked in record stores, and he was a manager at Record World. And was it Record World? No. Well, yeah, it was a small version of Record World. Um, yeah. uh, they was in the mall. And so, you know, Chuck was the artist that he was, knew how stuff that should be placed. And it was about like, no, nah, I need to be this because we need to stand out above everybody else. So all that stuff, man, you know, I, I, I just sat back and like. It's smart. It's a little marketing like that that makes a long, long distance. Now, good thing is a lot of people don't know. So I met you, I think it was about a year and a half ago, at your birthday party with T-Money at Soul. Soul in the Horn. Horn, yeah. Yep. Never been there before. I think <laughs> Finesse was spinning. And uh, Sway in the Morning was there, was Sway Calloway. Yeah, I was getting that the original with Boogie Cinderella Blind. was there. Yeah, I was getting that with Boogie Blind. Taylor, uh, Taylor yeah. was getting A lot down. of great people. Um, uh, a lot of great Prosper, they, they, Big ups to my man, D. Prosper and Natasha Diggs. They, mm -hmm. they always had me come through and do stuff, even on even on the streaming side. So it's like, I, I had I, them to my peoples. They, bro, they I had like such I, a good time there. Yeah. Like, me and uh, it was the original spin. We went there. We were having such a good time. T, such an amazing, amazing time. And and the funny thing was, I don't think you knew, I hurt my leg really, really bad. Like, I, I shouldn't even been on it, right? And then Spin's like, yo, let's go out and dance because everybody's dancing up in here. I'm like, come on, man, you know I'm hurting. <laughs> so she's like, come on, white boy, get your ass out on dance. So now she's challenging me. I'm like, you challenging my color? Oh, that's it. We're going down. So I stood up, and I forgot my leg was hurting. So like an idiot, I'm hurting so bad, I just started dancing in circles. I was just doing one of these. So that's the, we call you know, that, and then once in a while, I'd be like, the, hey. We call that the SpongeBob dance. <laughs> SpongeBob dance. Yes, I was doing the SpongeBob. I was in so much pain. But it was such a great vibe up in there that I had to just, I had to, and it was awesome. And um, that's when I met you and I got to really talk to you and Sway and a lot of these guys. And, you know, people at the end of the day, they look at you as guys as celebrities, which you are, but sometimes they forget you're human beings. You laugh, you have fun, you know, you're out of the limelight, you're just like us. And that was the best part about that night. So many legends were in the building, but... It felt like everybody was a legend for one night because we were all just part. Because 
that soul in the horn. Everybody's in there. And you like, D, Natasha, and Rich and them, they keep that, they keep that shit like real love, man. Everybody goes in there, man. No matter, and then when you go in there, it's like it's none of this, you just over here and you that there. And no, you are you. You just hang out. You yeah, know, because I can't wait to go back that's there again. The dopest, like, that's the dopest shit on the block right now, you know, for for guys like. I well, need hopefully them. by the winter time, yeah, man. Hopefully by the winter time they'll be able to open because we all know right now things that are opening is pretty much going to be outdoor events probably for the whole summer, and then they're going to probably wait until we really tie it down for those indoors to open. So hopefully people can be patient. Speaking of events. Um, like a lot of DJs, but you're all doing something different. I appreciate it. You're always doing, I believe it's like a Saturday night disco type of I kind of like, yeah, kind of like. I, I do Saturdays and Tuesdays and um, on Twitch, Saturday nights and Tuesdays. I go at 11 because I like, I like to feel like I'm hanging out. So I go on 11. I do three hours in case I get rated. So it's, a, it's like a, you know, I call it the disco den. There's a story to that. I was on it. I was on it. I was on a, was on a um, panel with um, Just Blaze and stuff like that. And I was explaining why <clears throat> I was talking about this record pool I used to be in. Well, me when we was younger, mm -hmm. um, me and Hank and all of us and Chuck and us. Um, it was called the Disco Den, and right. the story is like it was up on 125th Street. So mm -hmm. I'm in 11th grade, and every Thursday was pickup. So you had I had to leave. I will cut out of school to go all the way up to take take the bus. This is, you know, this is 11th grade, 79. Um, to take the bus to the um, subway in Jamaica. Yeah. The, um, mm -hmm. would catch the, what I would catch the, um, I would catch the, uh, the E and transfer, oh, then go and transfer over and catch the, uh, no, I would catch the E, no, catch, catch the A and go all the way uptown every Thursday. Every Thursday. Get my records. And who was in the record pools? The biggest and the best DJs in in Manhattan at that time. You know, guys like Eddie Chiba, the late great Starsky, Hollywood, Flash was a part of it. And I'm idolizing these cats, man. Reggie Wells was yeah. in there. It was, yo, it was, yeah, I, I'm a, I, I thought I was a little dude. As I got older, I was like, God damn, I ain't too, I'm not too far behind them. I thought they was really older than me. Like, oh my God. I mean, I, it's <laughs> all these people that we was, that I was in there with, man, just hanging out, just getting to learn. And, yeah. um, you know, the record pools was, was the shit. And they was on, like like a corner one hundred twenty fifth feet and 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 um, uh, I want to say Fifth Avenue. So and you know you guys, I'm tracking, traveling. We when we can't take Long Island Railroad, that's too much money. So we take the bus right. to the uh, bus to the subway. That shit took all mm -hmm. day, but had duffel bags and you had to hide your shit back then because motherfuckers see you with a box and you on the A train, motherfuckers is coming around you like yo, what's that? Oh, that's mine. Yeah. So I used to, I used to hide it, be like the, there you coming go. out of school, like just got like a yeah. half sack. And then sometimes I would get extra. And I was like, I would take my man would come with me. I was like, yo, bub, come on. We we, we got to go uptown and get these records. So it, it was that. And so I call it that as a reminisce of being um, uh, being in that record pool up there with, with them and all of the all of the dope DJs coming in from out of there. So, um, like yes, yeah, so I do. I just play a lot of shit that I like, you know, that we came up on before everything was called hip hop, wild hip hop. I was like, you don't play hip hop music. I'm like, so I grew up when that shit didn't exist. <laughs> it's like, it didn't, we took records and y'all, everybody know the story. We took records from records that we like, but you know, it came about if you, if you had, you know, a group like Pleasure that came out and they had the song Let's Dance. That was like, that was early in the 70s, man. And, you, and it just was funky. You just played the record, you know? Yeah. But when everybody became more beat matching and we started doing more parties, just like, we didn't have like rap records to go to and rappers to go to like everybody like you got now. 
or coming up in the 90s where it be, now it became a thing where people like, yo, my 90s music, I just listen to this. Or people that just like, I'm just so hip hop, I don't listen to nothing else. I'm a DJ first before all the other shit. So yeah. that's why I play the music that I play. And it, but I go into everything. So it's like, you know, my Saturday nights is I I'll start with some I do my classics and a lot of remixes. And then if I feel like it, I go into some sub bass music. Motherfuckers be like, well, a lot of people don't even know what that is. Some people do. And they were surprised that I go into sub bass music where it's just real hard, you know, just bass shit. Like, you know, I, I just like all kinds of shit. I got that from my London cats. <laughs> Bad guy, banger, <laughs> scream, banger, pinch, code nine, all them cats, Benji B, all them all. But my brother, my brother knew all of them. And then when we started getting down, started meeting all them cats. So, um, you know, and those guys started the dubstep coming out of the drum and bass world. See, a lot of things yeah. people got twisted. They don't know where shit comes from. And I try yeah. to keep up with it everything comes from and how it evolved you know so mm -hmm. i play a lot of that and then my my um my uh tuesdays are like a lot of 45s that i go digging and and, and the biggest thing on, my, on the 45s like i be finding 45s like if it's old some of it sounds like it's old like it got scratches and skips and 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 my and my, my moderators my homegirls that moderate um, <laughs> Nikki, Nikki and Sarah and Sophie Tucker Daly and all them, they be putting in in, in the stream chat that okay, Keith record skips about forty percent of the time, <laughs> so it <laughs> makes it fun because I, I don't, you know, I know a lot of cats that go get stuff reprinted. I, yeah, I, oh I, yeah, oh yeah, I, I just don't do that. I just go digging, and it was a fucked up record that I spent two dollars on. I like, Shit, I bought a record. Bought a forty-five for twenty-five dollars, and then just the beginning was 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 skipped. I spent twenty-five dollars on. It. I'm like, yo. Yeah, that man, was one of the annoying like, things like, about my life. You, you buy, you pay, you know, like, and they wouldn't let you listen to the shit before you bought it. Before you bought it, so I was like, yeah. So. Yeah, Tower Records changed though. They changed their ways when they had CDs. They would allow you to listen. Yeah. But we have a couple of minutes left, and I just want to mention to a lot of people, you've done so much stuff. Not just Public Enemy, but if people aren't aware, I mean, you literally work with LL Cool J, Ice Cube, Janet Jackson, and Sinead O'Connor. Um, I'm sure there's a story behind <laughs> that because that's, that's off Sinead the top. Is, Sinead is. Um, I don't do no story. I, I tell stories on my on my Tuesday, like last night in this stream. I tell stories on that from my experience of, of life dealing in music from the time I was 13. Exactly. You know, I was doing this since yeah. I was 13, so, you know. Oh, my God, I know. But you work with literally heavy hitters. Like, if people don't know, they're going to know. Yeah, we, um, we did some stuff, you know. We did some things. <laughs> I'm yeah. modest about it. We did some. We had some fun. I got the uh, only be modest. You earned it. Uh, Listen, you earned it. I mean, you worked with a group that I still would like to meet one day, and I'm trying to get them into the Elza Global concert. Um, because I have this thing called um, Rest in Peace Remembrance, where it's about artists that come on stage to perform who have lost somebody in their group to give homage to them. Mm -hmm. And I'm a Beastie Boys fan. I'm a diehard. Be never got to meet any of them, but I grew up with Run DMC, Beastie Boys, LL, Public Enemy. Um, that's something on my bucket list. Hopefully one day I'll get to meet Ad Rock. And my I, I never got people. to work with them either. I had a chance, but I know I can imagine. I, was, I heard you know, were really I mean, talented. Them. We met and we, you know, hung out and stuff like that. But you know, yeah, I mean, I I would have loved to have seen a collaboration with Public Enemy and Beastie Boys. That would have been was, crazy. That would have been that would have been cool. Oh my god, that would have been insane. Or, I mean, or, 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 it hard. Been, or it would have been really whack. <laughs> yeah, really I, I don't know. I mean, they're, they're just that good. I mean, I mean Chuck D alone. I mean, I mean they're just that good. But um, nah, it, it, so it, Keith, it could it could have been something crazy. Yeah, um, definitely. So Keith, before you go, man, why don't you let everybody know some uh where they can find you, where they can hook up with you, your, your things that you have Saturday and Tuesday. Is the hook? Catch me on catch me on Instagram. 
when I'm putting up stupid posts. <laughs> but I'm my my thing I do is mainly Twitch. I don't I don't DJ on Instagram. I had okay. issue, I had an issue with them back in the early days and they kicked me off for a day and because I'm playing certain records and I'm like Yeah, the FCC you gotta get an FCC. Yeah, I license. get it, I get it, I get it. But I'm I, it's a pain, it was just why do you think I don't play music? Yeah. Because they shut me like if I'm on right now, if I play public enemy yeah. and the algorithm catches it, yeah, our whole interview's gone. I'm tired of it. So I'm on Twitch Saturdays in the East Coast um at eleven. Uh, 11 p.m. Uh, uh, West Coast is 8 p.m. And and I got my thing about in the middle. And in the middle, um, and in the middle, <laughs> y'all figure it out because I can't figure out the time zones in the middle of my head. <laughs> uh, CST, oh, two, it two hours back, two hours back, two CST. Two hours back, Chicago's an hour back. I'm like, yeah, like uh, what, what, what? <laughs> So y'all figure, figure it out in the middle. I love y'all. Just go on his Instagram and just look and follow him and figure it out. If uh, you really uh, want to hear it, you're going to hear it. I'm, I'm, and if I, you guys don't know. Well, I'm on Twitch now. I, I changed my, my tag. I am a visual artist that plays music in the background. All right? So y'all might hear hip-hop one time. Like You might hear hip-hop that... On Saturdays, you might hear it all night. Sometimes you won't hear it. I might go, I, I'll go into some some old school disco shit. Like, <laughs> like, like fucking, um, I don't know, who's a Giorgio. I might play a bunch of Giorgio shit all night. <laughs> so I, I, because I grew up on all of that. You know, we had all that. There was no such thing as hip hop and blah, blah. Was, Nope, I had all that from funk to pop to blues, but I I keep everything in a dance mode. So like I'm, I'm I'm and then my Tuesdays, forty fives, tequila, and some wild stories that I grew up with and experiences doing DJing in Long Island and whatever kind of shit that my friends used to do that I I would hang around for a little bit when it got too when it got too wild. I was like, I'll see you later. <laughs> oh, I got, I got you. I got you. I got. I got stories okay. where we where we where we used to throw parties, man. Fights and I all was this about other shit, and what we had to do, and those was, those was. I mean, those was, those was what it was. My mom's used to work the door, and, and cats was like, my mom's like, no, he didn't pay. He's not getting in. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, okay, was let funny. me. My mom's working the door, man. When we was getting down. <laughs> We uh, we're definitely going to have you back because we obviously have so many stories, and that's why guests like you, I welcome back all the time. We're going to book this again. Yeah. But we've been right. talking with Keith Shockley, Public Enemy, DJ, music, music legend, music producer, the Bomb Squad, the whole nine. You've been watching uh, FaceTime with Todd Warden every night here, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, celebrities five nights a week, and we're booked out. So, guys, follow me. We got promos on my IG. We got past interviews. Check out John Amos. But coming up tomorrow night, uh, if you guys know uh, my three sons, I booked Stanley Livingston, Chip Douglas, second longest syndicated show in the world is going to be here tomorrow night. And then Friday, I got my man Buddy White from the group, R&B group intro. And then next week, we have a pretty great, pretty great lineup. We got Albertus Joseph, New York City's top street artist. Uh, Michael Winslow from Police Academy. We got Willie Taylor from Day 26. Rima Webb, Broadway star. And we're going to finish it out with DJ Redbottom, my girl, international DJs. We got to get the women on here as well. Women's so, Month. Women's That's Month. Women's That's why we got to have it on. Give it up to the women out there. Because without the women, us gentlemen ain't going to be here. So, Keith, thank you for being on the show. I appreciate you, man. Thank you. And what I always tell people, wear your mask. Practice social distancing. Yeah. And if you're not living a passionate life, think about it. Then whose life are you living? Yeah. Keith, have a great night, right, brother. Right. I'll see you soon. Peace. All right.